In this lecture, you will learn about can activate route guard in Angular and how to implement it. So the can activate route guard decides if a route can be activated or not based on a given condition. So let's say we have a route which should only be accessed by the logged in users. It should not be accessible to the users who are not logged in. That means the route should only be accessible for the authorized users. And for that, we can use can activate route guard. Let's understand this with an example. Currently, in this Angular application, all the views can be accessed by all the users. So all the users will have access to this home page, this about page, this contact page, and this courses page. But let's say now our requirement has changed and we want all the users to have access to this home page, about page, and contact page. But only the authorized users should have access to this courses page. This courses page should only be visible to those users who are logged in. It should not be visible to the users who are not logged in. Let's see how to implement this functionality. So let's open VS Code. And inside this app folder, I'm going to create a new service file. And let's call this service file Coast Guard Service. And since it is a TypeScript file, we need to use this .ts extension. Inside this Coast Guard Service file, let's create and export a class. And let's call this class Coast Guard Service. Now, here we want to use can activate route guard. So, for that, we need to make this Coast Guard Service class implement the can activate interface. For that, let's use implements keyword and we want to implement can activate interface. And in order to use this interface, we also need to import it from Angular slash router. Now, since we have implemented this can activate interface, it will force us to implement can activate method, which this can activate interface declares. Okay, so inside this Coast Guard service class, let's go ahead and let's define can activate method. Okay, now this method takes two parameters. The first parameter is of type activated route snapshot, and the second parameter is of type router state snapshot. And in order to use them, we need to import them from angular slash router. Okay, so here we are importing them. And this can activate method is also going to return either a Boolean value or it is going to return an observable which will emit a Boolean value or it can also return a promise which will resolve to a Boolean value. Okay, so here let's say we simply want to return a Boolean value from this method instead of returning an observable or a promise. You can use observable or a promise when you want to return a value asynchronously. Okay. And from within this method, we need to return a Boolean value true or false. So for now, let's simply return true from here. Now, if you remember from our last lecture, if we return true from the route guard method, in that case, the navigation process continues. But if we return false, in that case, the navigation process stops and the user stays put. Okay, so currently we are returning true from this method. So in this case, the navigation will not stop. Let's see that. For that, first we need to register this service in the app modules. So let's open app modules file and inside this providers array, let's specify our Coast Guard service. Okay, and in order to use this Coast Guard service, we also need to import it. Then let's go ahead and let's open our app routing module. And from these routes, we want to guard this courses route, right? So on this, on this route, let's go ahead and let's use another property, which is can activate. And to this, we can assign an array. And inside this array, we can specify the service class, which is implementing can activate interface. So in our example, this course guard service class is implementing this can activate interface. So let's go ahead, copy this class name and let's specify it inside this array. So here the class is course guard service. And in order to use this service, we need to import it. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. So let's go to home page and let's try to access this courses page. 
so currently this courses page is accessible that's because currently from this method from this can activate method we are returning true now let's go ahead and let's return false so when we return false in that case the navigation will not happen let's see that so you can see it is showing the blank page let me go to the home page and now let me try to go to this courses page so here i have clicked on this courses page three times but it is not navigating me to the courses page that's because from here currently we are returning false okay so currently we are returning the hard coded boolean value true or false but let's say we want to return a boolean value based on a condition and the condition is this can activate method should return true if the user is authorized but it should return false if the user is not authorized so let's write that logic for that again inside this app folder i'm going to create a new service and i'm going to call this service auth service okay inside this auth service let's go ahead and create a class and export it and let's call this class auth service now inside this service let's create a property let's call it logged in it is going to be of type boolean and initially let's set it to false then let's also create a method let's call it login and inside this method let's set the value of this logged in property to true okay and let's also create a logout method and inside this method let's set this logged in property to false all right and let's also create one more method and let's call it is authenticated and from within this method we are going to return the value of this logged in property okay so here let's say let's use this return keyword and it is going to return the value of this logged in property now we want to use this auth service inside this course card service so since we want to use one service within another service first we need to decorate this receiving service with at injectable decorator right we have already learned this then let's also specify a constructor for this course card service and inside this constructor let's create a private parameter let's call it auth service and it is going to be of type auth service okay so here angular will inject an instance of this auth service class and that will be assigned to this auth service parameter and since we are using this private keyword in front of it behind the scenes a private property called auth service will be created all right so instead of directly returning a value true or false now let's use if else statement so inside this if statement let's check if this dot auth service dot is authenticated is returning true or false if it is returning true that means the user is authenticated the user has logged in so in that case we want to return true from this can activate method otherwise if this is authenticated returns false that means the user is not logged in so in that case first we want to navigate user to the home page and then we want to return false so in order to navigate user to the home page we need an instance of the router class so again let's create a private parameter let's call it router which is going to be of type router okay and on this router instance we will have a navigate method and where do you want to navigate the user when he is not logged in and trying to access the courses page we want to navigate navigate him to the home page for that i am using this empty string so we want to navigate him to the root url all right then let's also return false from this else part all right now let we also need to register this service in the app modules so let's go to app modules and here let's register this service okay and in order to use this service we also need to import it from this auth service file with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page 
so currently i'm in about page now when i click on this courses link it has redirected us to the home page that's because currently this logged in property is set to false so when it is set to false this is authenticated will return false and when this is authenticated it is returning false this else part will be executed so that means it will navigate us to the home page and then it will return false and that's what you're seeing here if i go if i go to about page or contact page and if i click on this courses link it will navigate us to the home page but from here if i return true so if i set this logged in property to true in that case this is authenticated will return true and when it returns true this can activate method will return true and it will allow navigation to courses page let's see that let's go back to our web page and now when i click on this courses link we are navigated to the courses page all right let's go back to vs code and here let's again set it back to false and now let's open app component.html file and what i'm going to do is here i'm going to add two more links for login and logout so i'm going to add a span element and here let me set the style so let's set float right okay inside this span let's add two links so one link for login and another link for logout and now on this li element i'm going to bind click event okay and to this click event let's specify a method let's call this method login in the same way let's also bind this click event on the second li element and to this click event let's bind logout method okay now let's go ahead and let's create this login and logout method inside app component.ts file so i'm going to create this login method and from within this login method i want to call the login method of this auth service class where we are setting this logged in property to true so for that i will have to inject an instance of this auth service class inside this app component class for that let me simply create a private parameter here let's call it auth service and it is going to be of type auth service okay then here inside this login method let's access this auth service and let's call the login method of that auth service in the same way let's create the logout method so let's call it logout and from within this method we are going to call the logout method of auth service okay so in the login method we are setting this logged in property to true and in the logout method we are setting the logged in property to false okay let's save the changes let's go to the web page so initially the you can see this login and logout links have been created here so initially the logged in property is set to false here okay so if i try to access this courses link it will not allow us to access this link you know it will not allow us to access this page let's say i'm in the about page and i click on this courses link it will redirect me to the home page it will not allow me to view the courses page but when i click on this login in that case this logged in property will be set to true so now if i try to access this courses page now i'm able to access that page now let me click on this logout and let's go to about page and now let me try to access this courses page so now it is redirecting me to the home page so this is the use of can activate route card this can activate route card allows us to protect a route from unauthorized users in the next lecture let's talk about can activate child route card